Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have the second installment here of the Battle of the Long Lasting Foundations. Uh, the second one that I have here with us is the Sephora 10 Hour Wear Perfection Foundation. I have not used this yet. The plastic is still on it. Um, I'm not sure if this color is going to be too light for me, kind of like the other one, but I did exchange it for something that was darker like originally I had accidentally bought the ivory I don't know how that happened but I was like this is so clearly not my color um so I went into the store that's by me to exchange it and then I'm ending up with Claire light number 20 so it might still be light which means it might be a good January foundation I don't know because I'm still coming off of like the natural summer glow so I'm going to do my makeup the exact same way, well not like the exact same way, but I'm going to do my makeup pretty similar to what I did before using the same primer and stuff. Um, and then I'll have the other, my first one linked down below and then you can check that out. And then that one was the Shiseido Synchro Skin Long Lasting Foundation liquid foundation I can't remember I don't know name is like a hundred words long so I'll link that down below and then I'm going to test this out for you so this is gonna be kind of like a first impressions because I never used this before so let's get started so to start again we're gonna use the Laura Mercier radiance primer So that's thicker than the Shiseido by far. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so the Shiseido is a little bit waterier. And then this is, yeah, this is much thicker. So I wonder if this will last longer. The Shiseido one lasted, I think I checked in after eight and a half hours and then it was kind of like breaking down a little bit in this area. Um, so I'm just going to, since I applied that with my finger, I'm going to blend it with a beauty blender. Okay, this is like almost like a sticky formula. The color's not too bad. into the hairline there. You know, this color is better than I thought it would be. That's for sure. It's got decent coverage. It's not like super, super heavy coverage. Like I kind of expected it to be with that consistency because it is like a thick, pasty consistency. I kind of thought it would be a thicker coverage, but it doesn't feel thick on the skin. It's actually pretty good. This retails for $26 in Canada too, by the way, which is not bad at all. So I still have that little blemish here. It's gone down. It's no longer like a tumor, but it's uh, still there. So I might put some concealer on top. The finish is nice though, it's not like, it's just like a natural finish. It's not super matte, which is good because I have drier skin right now. Oh yeah, so it does say on here that it's medium coverage and it's buildable. So it says that on the back, um, which totally makes sense. So if I wanted to add a little bit more, let's see if we can like build this up on the side here. Just because that's where my problem areas are. The facial that I had the other day was so good and it like, it got rid of some of my scarring there. It made my skin like whoosh, like a freaking light bulb. Let's just see. Let's just. Oh yeah, that's quite buildable. Huh. See a little bit of the scarring, like a tiny bit, but it. I don't know. 
it is buildable. I don't feel like it's putting on a mask. So it's good. And I, I was gonna use liquid highlighter today, but I didn't want that to affect the foundation. So I'm still gonna use powder highlighter. Um, for the concealer, we're gonna use the Too Faced Born This Way concealer again. Um, still like this, skin still dry, still need moisture. Uh, it does break down after a while and I do have a long day today, but we're just gonna use it anyways. the heavy hand because I'm tired. Really freaking early right now. You're literally getting ready with me for work this morning. Then we're gonna go back in with the beauty blender and blend that in. the concealer with the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and my Sigma F35 highlighter brush. Um, it's the tapered one. This is really good. And I don't really set my foundation. Um, I just use a setting spray for that. So I'm just gonna... Oh, And then we're gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. This is, my color is wiped off this, but I'm 99% sure this is 30M. And then the big Tarte brush that I used last time. It's a very soft brush and I love this. Let's put the brush again. And then we are going to use the Rose Doro Baked Blush by Milani. This is amazing. I love this one. I have Luminosa too, and I have Coralina, and they're all just great formulas. Just put it on there. A little bit of a flush. But it's freezing here, so it's not like I really need it. And then we're gonna go in with the this fan brush here. This is a uh, crown brushes. This is the I IB104 Deluxe Soft Fan. I really like this to apply highlighter. Um, and then I'm gonna use the Super Shock Cheek ColourPop highlighter. So this is the like creamish powder original formula that they came out with. And then this is Butterfly Beach. A little bit of a glow. That's it for the face makeup. I'm just gonna do my brows and then um, not really much else. Trying to keep it a little office appropriate. Want to keep it natural, whatever. So brows, mascara, maybe a little bit wash of like shadow to like deepen my crease in my eyes. I'm not 100% sure, but and we're done. Okay, so this is just the finished look. Natural, whatever. This is my everyday face for work. I'm not wearing lipstick because whatever. Um, just did like a light wash of eyeshadow, super easy, uh, natural face makeup. First impression of the Sephora foundation is it is buildable, it is a medium coverage, so you're not gonna get like a full mask necessarily, which is pretty cool that it's medium coverage for a long lasting foundation. I find that the long lasting foundations are usually like really thick. Um, so they've got like the full, full, full coverage. Uh, I'm kind of leaning more towards medium-ish coverage lately though, just because my skin's starting to finally be normal. Um, so it seems to be fine, but it seems to be settling a little bit right here right now. So it's gonna be into my fine lines there. We'll see how it is throughout the day. So right now it is 7.20 in the morning and I'm going to leave for work here soon and then I'm working I'm working until five-ish and then I'm gonna go and record our podcast at a friend's place 
and then I'll be home to check in probably around eight or so and then we'll see how this lasted so it's gonna be over 10 hours it is 10 hour wear so we'll see <laughs> I'll take a I'll look at it at around like five or six and see how it looks and then I'll check in when I get home so it's gonna be a bit of a long day for me hey guys welcome back so here we are it is now 7 18 so it's been 12 hours uh, it says it only lasts for 10, so I get it. It's fine. Um, I did check it out at 5 p.m. because I filmed this morning at 7, and then 10 hours from that is 5 p.m. So I did check it out and see how it felt, see how it looked. Um, I did also ask my friend how she thought it looked, and uh, she agreed with me when I said it broke down a little bit here. Um, it did settle into my lines quite a bit here. Um, it did in the morning when I applied it as you saw, um, but it also kind of settled a little bit more during the day. So it did make my skin look a little bit older um, in that sense. And then it broke down a little bit here. So that was at 5 p.m. So now we're at quarter after seven and I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit here so you can see. You can see. It broke down quite a bit here at the 12 hour mark. So I have barely any coverage here and it looks a little pasty. Um, yeah, so it has broken down and especially here where my oilier parts are. My thoughts on this foundation, I do really like it. It is a medium coverage, which I'm kind of digging lately. Uh, it doesn't feel like I have a huge mask on my face. Finish is a little bit more natural. It does emphasize a little bit of the lines here. Um, I found that it looked really nice though and the color is pretty adaptable for me. 10 hours, it did last. Broke down a tiny, tiny bit, so it's not that bad. Uh, it did last longer than the Shiseido, which the Shiseido, when we checked in afterwards, at around eight and a half hours, it was breaking down already. So yeah, it's a little on par. It's a little bit longer lasting than the Shiseido. Um, and but I do really like the Sephora one and I feel like for, I believe it retails for 26, watch me be totally wrong and I'm gonna have to do like a weird overlay here with a shitty font. Um, but for $26, it's not bad, it's good. And I do like the finish, I do like the way that it feels on my skin. And I did find even though it was a little bit pastier and a little bit stickier, it was easier, it was not easier, but it was still easy to blend. So I do recommend it if you're looking for a little bit more of a budget-friendly non-drugstore option. Um, talking a lot with my hands. And yeah, I'm not sure what foundation I'm gonna do next, but I will figure that out in the next day or so. I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do Estee Lauder Double Wear because it has been my go-to for a while. So I'm kind of interested to see how it stacks up to the rest of them. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, let me know what your favorite long-lasting foundation is, and long-lasting concealer. I want to know um, what your favorite long-lasting concealer is. I'm kind of in the market for a new concealer, nothing too pricey, but I do want to try something new. So just let me know down below and all of that fun stuff, and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day!